In this video, I'm going to talk about the programming language R and why R is used by data journalists. In particular, I'm going to answer two key questions. Um, why you might use R instead of other spreadsheets and why you might choose to use R rather than other programming languages. Now, Andrew Flowers, um, a data journalist who uses R regularly in his work, talks at length about his work and the role of R in his um, data journalism in a video that's well worth watching separately, particularly around the um, seven minute mark where he outlines some of the key features of R, for example, its open source nature and the fact that it's free to use um, and some of the technical capabilities, including ggplot, which is a, a way of making visualizations in R. For me, there are a number of reasons why you might specifically use R compared to a spreadsheet. One of the most obvious is that R will handle large data sets much more comfortably than Excel will. So if you have a data set which Excel um, slows down with or even crashes completely, then you probably want to turn to R and perhaps use the skills um, within that. Also, there's some functionality in R which is easier to use than in spreadsheets. It's much easier to combine data in R, for example, than it is in a spreadsheet. And there's a lot of um, cleaning functionality in R which you won't get in basic spreadsheet software. That said, there are some situations where cleaning is actually much faster using basic spreadsheet functions like trim or right or left things like that. One other big advantage of R is that it allows you to use code that others have created. This is a really fundamental element of programming in journalism. Many people think that they have to learn all the code themselves and have to write code from scratch all the time. Actually, a lot of the time we're learning about code by finding chunks of code that others have used and adapting it to our purposes. Another advantage of, of um, R is the transparency that they um, introduce into journalism. Notebooks, which are widely used in R in particular, but also in other languages like Python and JavaScript, basically allow us to not just write scripts of code, but also to add a narrative and explain what's happening. And that makes it easier for others to understand how we've arrived at the conclusions that we've reached. Equally, R is very good for making it possible to communicate more clearly with others in our own organisation or people that we're collaborating with. One of the big problems with spreadsheets is they don't actually show the sequence of steps that we've taken to arrive at the numbers in that spreadsheet. You don't know whether you need to look in column A or column F or row 5 or row 500 to find the first or second or third piece of analysis that's happened in that spreadsheet. So it's, it can be quite difficult to navigate a spreadsheet by someone else and find out how they've arrived at the results that they have. In code, by contrast, you have a series of lines of code which are executed in that order normally, so it's easier to understand what's happened and in what order. And then finally, um, code, and again notebooks in particular, are very useful for reusing a sequence of steps. So if you're doing a piece of analysis of some data and you expect to have to do that again, so say you're looking at homelessness figures and you expect to do that again in a year or another month, then it makes sense to encode that sequence of steps that you've taken in a language like R. And whereas with a notebook, oh, sorry, with a spreadsheet, you might have to copy and paste data into a, another spreadsheet and have the formulas pre-written. And there is a way to, to reuse formulae in spreadsheets, but it's much easier to re-perform analysis in code and in notebooks. Likewise, in a notebook, you can plan ahead. You can write your code in anticipation of a data set being released, and then just import the new data and run the lines of code that you've already written. So in terms of speed, it gives you an advantage as well. Now, just to illustrate um, one of these points, the, the point about collaboration, this is a, a um, GitHub repo 
for the BBC visual journalism team and um, specifically it's the R cookbook that they put together. And the reason that they created this cookbook was to make it um, easier for other BBC journalists in particular to make sure that they were creating graphics using R that were in the right style, in the style of the BBC. So it ensures some consistency across that organisation and they put that um, online, although it didn't necessarily need to be online and some parts of this are, are not online, but that makes it easier for that organisation to collaborate and ensure consistency. So why R and not in another language? Well, I, I think really this boils down to RStudio. Um, RStudio is the application, the tool that most people use to write and execute R code. Now the two are separate. R is a language. RStudio is a tool for writing and running that language. Um, you don't have to use RStudio to write R. You can do it in other ways. Um, but RStudio makes it, I would say, a lot easier to use that particular language than um, other languages that you might use instead. Another reason why R is widely used is it does have a number of statistical packages. So a package is a collection of code that performs a, a particular purpose. So it might be around visualization or cleaning. Um, and there, there are quite a lot of useful packages for performing particular types of analysis. Equally, there are packages that will allow you to generate some sort of HTML output, some sort of visualization or interactivity. And that can be quite useful for data journalists as well. But ultimately, really it comes down to convention. Um, there isn't a, a hard and fast reason why you should use R rather than another language. You can use Python, for example, to achieve many of the same results as RStudio. And in some areas, Python is probably better. Scraping, for example, is probably better supported and easier to do in Python. Equally, you can do many of these things in JavaScript or using command line or SQL or various other languages and tools and techniques. So really, it just comes down to what suits you. I wouldn't say that you have to learn R if you can learn something else that does the same things. It really comes down to what's easier for you to learn. And often, if you learn one language first, whichever is easiest, then it then becomes easier to learn other languages. Personally, I um, started with Ruby. I didn't get on with Ruby. I then moved on to Python. That made more sense to me. It was easier for me to learn. And then when I came to learn R, because I'd already learned Python, the, this, a lot of these languages are very similarly um, set up and designed, if you like. So R then was much easier to learn once I'd learned Python. So don't feel that you kind of have to learn one language rather than another, but do have a general awareness of all of these languages and why they might be used. So just to give you some examples of these, this is um, one particular data journalist, Rob Grant, ran a website called R for Journalists, where he would share some of his experiences as a data journalist and um, how he reached certain results. And that's been one of the factors that's contributed to the convention of using R. And in fact, I would say that in the, in the UK, R is probably more widely used than in other countries like the US, for example, where I think um, Python is more widely used by data journalists than it is in the UK. Here, for example, is The Economist sharing its code on GitHub. Uh, and The Economist has used R for this. So you can see how they've written the code and adapt it and rerun it yourself. But then here's another data journalist in Brazil using Python instead, and Pandas and Matplotlib and Geopandas, which are different packages, libraries within, Panda, uh, within Python to achieve similar results. So again, it really comes down to convention to the particular country you're operating in and most importantly what you prefer what makes more sense to you. So some key points to sum up. First of all you need to know that R is used by data journalists and it's used within the R Studio tool so it's very much worth exploring as a data journalist yourself. 
When you do use it, consider why you're using it. What's its advantage over a spreadsheet? Sometimes a spreadsheet is the best tool for the job. It's quick, it allows you to look at the data in perhaps sometimes an easier way than R does and, and gives you a quicker overview. But R has many other advantages over spreadsheets. You may choose to use R rather than a spreadsheet simply because you want to learn it. And that's absolutely a very important justification. Sometimes I will use R rather than a spreadsheet because I want to um, keep practicing and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm trying new techniques. But always remember other languages can do the same and if you don't get on with R, try another language, try Python, try JavaScript, whatever it is and see what works for you. Sometimes going back and forth can help unlock certain things that help you to learn until something clicks and then eventually it all makes sense. So don't kind of hold yourself to one particular language. As long as you can get the results you need, that's the important thing.